Hello and welcome, I am your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing to make a tooltip in Unity. We're going to add the ability to update our tooltip text dynamically. Let's begin. So this is our scene and this is our tooltip. Now sometimes you might want to display some dynamic text inside your tooltip. Like for example to display some sort of cooldown or a cost of doing an action. So in those cases it's very useful to have a tooltip that updates in real time rather than just a simple string. So for testing, we're going to add a sort of cooldown on our attack and we want to display it inside our tooltip. So let's go to the window code. And here is some basic cooldown code. As you can see, it's a simple float. When we click on the button, it increases the float to five seconds and it goes down by delta time on every update. So we want to display this attack cooldown after the attack here in this tooltip. So for that, let's go into the tooltip class. And in here down on the show tooltip function, we're going to make another private void show tooltip. However, instead of receiving just a basic string, we're going to receive a func which returns a string. So let's call this get tooltip string func. A func is just a delegate which returns a certain object type, so in this case, a string. So let's store this as a member variable. So go up here. And since we have two show tooltips, let's expand this code into its own function. So a private void set text. And here we're going to set the text and actually set the background size and we call it from here and also from here. Now the tooltip string is the returning result from this func. And in order to keep our code simple, let's make it so that this function also goes through this one. So just like that, we still have this version of our function, which takes a simple string and then calls this function by sending it a simple func, which just returns this static string. So this isn't necessarily the best way in terms of performance, but since we normally only have one tooltip, that is usually not a problem. And this way our code is easier to follow. So now on our update, in here we set the text using our set text function. And now for the tooltip string, we're going to use the get tooltip string func and simply call that function. So on every update, we're going to set the text based on whatever this function returns. So our code should be working for updating our tooltip. Now we can go back to the window code. And in here, when we show our tooltip, instead of sending just a basic string, let's send a func, which will return a string. So it will say attack and then the attack cooldown. All right, so let's test. Okay, so here is the window, all the others still work. And if I go over the attack, you can see attack with a cooldown of zero. And now if I click on it, yep, you can see that the attack has been set the cooldown to five seconds and it is updating on every frame. And all the others, again, still work as normal static tooltips. So again, click and everything works. Okay, great. So now that we have our tooltip updating, which is very useful, let's also add some more functions to make our code easier to use. So in here are some helper functions. So a public static void, call it add tooltip. And we're going to add tooltip to a transform. So in here, we simply do the same thing that we were doing in here, but instead of having all of this code in our window, we're simply going to have a helper function in there. So we can actually copy this. And on the button UI class, I have a separate action, which I normally use just for the tooltips. So the mouse over one's tooltip and mouse out one's tooltip. This way I don't ruin whatever behavior the button has on the normal mouse over. So again, these are helper functions for how I set up my buttons using this button UI class. But if you are using something else, just modify it in here. Also as another helper function, we can also create an extension method. So in here we have two nice helper functions depending on what pattern you prefer to use. So now we can go back to the window and clean up all of this code and simply do the transform.addTooltip and this is one way we can use, this is using the extension method.
And here we are using the static method. So using whatever pattern you prefer, you can see that our tooltip class is now very easy to use. So let's go and test to make sure that it works. And yep, there it is. All the tooltips are working. This one is working. And yep, there's the cooldown. And this one is working, which has the other method. And just like that, everything is working perfectly. So there you have it. We took our tooltip and added an option to update the tooltip during runtime. We also added the helper functions to make our class very easy to use. In the next video, we're going to make a tooltip warning. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from mtcodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.